Welcome to the Most Must Listen To Show on the Internet. Welcome to AEG. I am your host, JB, and we are on day three of E3. Holy shit. Holy shit is right. That means Nintendo I have a goose with me. wins by default, bitches. Oh, oh, hot take right off the bat. It, we got Goose here. Hey. <laughs> hey, everybody. And we have Marlon. Hori <laughs> Nintendo has won. Yeah. Freaking crazy, man. Hey, guys, I mean, yeah, I mean, let's just get it out of the way. Hell of a conference. Hell of a direct. It wasn't even an actual conference conference, but wow. It was 40 minutes. Nonstop. Nonstop orgasm-inducing video games that are releasing in 2019 i was gonna say nintendo saved 2019 more yes, or they less. did yes they did i mean they got some stuff that's the, the some of the stuff got pushed back like uh animal crossing is now march of next year um but it's out of that little weird window of watchdogs slash final fantasy so that's good for them it's a little later in march but witcher yeah. three we yeah. gonna get to see oh jennifer my God, jennifer of vanderberg or vanderberg or whatever I don't know like I like we I mean we've talked about this I only played a few like 10 to 15 hours of that game I don't know if it's something I would want to get on oh, the switch I, though I, I agree with you I like me personally I think it's gonna run like shit if you put it on a tv especially if you put it on a 4k tv and you blow it up it's gonna look like shit compared to consoles and pc but just the fact that you can have that 100 hour 150 hour experience on handheld and I know that there's a whole bunch of folks like us who don't care about the, the the fidelity in terms of image quality, and they just want that experience on the go. I am so happy for them. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's it's a it's a feat in and of itself that that yeah. game can be on Switch. I mean, that's, if that's if bananas. nothing like like sixty bucks coming out sixty dollars brand new. I mean, when like right now I can go buy that game on my Xbox One X for the same version for uh, fifteen bucks. Like. With all DLC, but, but you can't take it on the go. But you unless can't you take have it on the go. Unless you have xCloud. Yeah, exactly. There, there's a lot of, there's definitely a lot of caveats, but yeah, it's, it's, I feel like they're going to do, so, they, they have to have done something with that game to make it, like the draw distance has to be extremely reduced or something. I, I don't really know. I'm, I'm, I'd be curious just to pick it up just to see how it runs or, you know, maybe wait till like Digital Foundry does something. I'd love to see a Digital Foundry video on that game for the Switch. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, that was, because, because it was Digital huge. Foundry themselves made a short video a couple of weeks back or a week ago. It was relatively uh, recent. They made a video showing what a theoretical Switch would look like running the game. And they sort of deduced that it wouldn't run. They're like, it just it just runs like crap. It just doesn't look any good. So they, they sort of I'm stupid, simulated yeah. I'm, what see, I th- what switch specs on PC they could run. I thought it was going to be one of those things where you know how when uh, when Resident this, Evil or Assassin's yeah, Creed where you can stream you. it. Yeah. Yep, took the took the words out of my mouth there, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I thought it was going to be something where you know you are basically streaming it from a server on Nintendo side or streaming it from your Wi-Fi. As opposed to it's rendering, you know, via streaming service as opposed to or not streaming service, but via streaming as opposed to having it on the physical cart. So I'm I'm super interested. But that was a big thing. And that's coming this year sometime in the 2019. fall. They have not, yeah, they have not said when I can see that being like right before like Black Friday, right around holiday time, maybe even like somehow, you know, some of those games release like the first week of December. I could see that being something. I want to know who did the hitting that job. window too. I, I don't. I don't imagine CD Projekt Red taking on that port. I, I doubt think that's something that they outsource because yeah, they just they're balls deep at cyberpunk. It's cyberpunk <laughs> so, yeah. um, it's super. I'm that. That was. I mean, everybody. The rumors were, you know, all over the place. They've been all over the place for what last few weeks. Last few weeks, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was that was something cool to see. Like again, like you said, it's not for me personally. Um, you know, maybe. If I don't end up ever, you know, getting a chance to play it on my my PS4 or my Xbox One, you know, one of those things maybe, you know, six months down the road it'll be thirty bucks and I might pick it up on the Switch just to see, see how, what it's how, like, see, see how it runs and stuff. Yep. Um, but just yeah, we, we sort of we sort of went on a tangent. So the, yeah, you know, I mean, honestly, there was so much in this thing. We can jump around <laughs> as much as we want. Oh, dude, to. I have I have the whole list. I literally right. have the entire I was gonna list. Say, of man, it. I I didn't get to watch it like verbatim. So if I took notes while I was at work, <laughs> um, 
So I just have a bunch of scribbles on a piece of paper here. Um, so just real they, quick, we, we, yeah. they they opened up with um, they opened up with like this Eye of Sauron looking thing, and then you see Link battling. Oh my god, the Nintendo fans are going to kill me, but I I wrote down Link battling the Night thing. It's like this little night looking thing. Are we talking we about a knife for crying out loud? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, I got the night thing right. <laughs> Oh, we're Nintendo, talking Meta Knight, Jesus Christ. The, the Nintendo fanboys just cringe. They're like, oh my god, the cringe, this guy sucks. Um, so they just showed that uh, the folk, the guy, the folks, uh, Dragon Quest will be in Smash Ultimate coming in September 2019. Yep. And then moving on from that, Dragon Quest Eleven yep. is out on Switch September 27th. 2019. That is cool because, I mean, I, I own that game on PS4. Like, I bought it. Right around launch, it was like about a month after launch, I think, because I, I hadn't played a Dragon Quest game since 8 on the PS2. And I was like, man, I really want to play Dragon Quest. I played a few hours of it. It didn't really grab me. But the cool thing with, with on the Switch port, they're actually doing a... Exclusive content for it. Yeah, it's a 16-bit graphical toggle mode where it switches to old-school-looking Dragon Quest, like yes. from the from the SNES. I, I, I dislike I, I don't dislike the fact that they did that. I just like the fact that it's exclusive. Yeah. Like just put it out on PS4, put it out on PC and sell it to me. Sell it to me for ten bucks, sell it to me for fifteen bucks. I'll buy it. I wanna have it. I wanna say that I own it. But I uh I can see why they do it to try to entice yeah. the Switch owners. Oh yeah. Because I mean this is a game that's been out for at that when when it comes out it'll be over a year. So Yeah. So, and but, from um, that they move on ahead. to oh. Yoshi. Yoshiaki Kozuma, and I, all I wrote down was that his teeth reminded me of Freddy Krueger because he's oh got God, horrible such fucking a horrible teeth. Person. Yeah, <laughs> and then, I mean, and then, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the, I'm gonna be the one that takes this, that takes this punch today, Marlon. I got you, bro. But man, Japanese people have some real ass badass teeth sometimes. So do the people from the UK. Our UK listeners, you got horrible. Also true. Teeth. I mean, hey, Austin Powers made a goddamn joke about it. Yeah, they call them British teeth. Oh god. Yep. Anyways, but Doug, uh, but, uh, Doug but Bowser, Doug Bowser shows up yep. and it was the worst riff on his name. I mean, so, I mean, they make a joke like, about it. That's the thing. They have to make a joke about it. I mean, it's too it's too coincidental. It was such a horrible joke though. But it is it I, was I, terrible. I, I wish they hadn't made a joke. But anyway, uh the uh Freddy Krueger teeth guy snaps his fingers and Luigi Mansion 3 is up next. It takes place in a hotel. Uh, things quickly take a dark turn. For me, I felt like it had a Ghostbusters feel. Yeah, uh, you they see said it was Luigi really wearing that he too. has something with like a like a proton pack. Mm -hmm. That's what it looked like to me. And then they showed off some of the functions such as slam, suction, a uh, suction, and then my favorite, which was I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Guigi. Yes. Did you see that? I did see the trailer. Yes. Yeah, Guigi, and then it's going to have something called uh, Scare Scrapper Mode, which will feature online and local co-op mode. It'll be available in 2019 with no specific date shown, but uh, it, it looked really cool. Um, what's What was next after that? So after that... Well, so um, real quick, sorry. Um, Luigi's Mansion 3 is, yeah, this, this year. They did not give a definitive date like most of the stuff in this conference, but... Although a lot of stuff they did. Yes, which we'll get to. So what was, next? Uh, what was up next? Just real quick. So one of the things that I like about the about um, the direct was that Bowser set up what was coming up in the treehouse. So he points down at the screen and he says, "Hey, listen! If you see this icon that says uh, Nintendo Treehouse, just know that the games that have this badge will be featured on our the treehouse." So, yeah. yeah. So make sure. Or like a that. live, like a live gameplay. Yeah. So one of the so after um, we just mentioned three, we had this game called The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Resistance Tactics, oh and it's my out. Gosh, dude. It's out in 2019. It literally looks like a clone of Final Fantasy Tactics. Oh. Uh, it looks cool. I was like freaking out over here. I would want to play on handheld. Although, I think what the antagonist, what they showcased to be as the antagonist is just this ugly, hideous looking thing. It looks like a gremlin. Do I get a point from that or basically do I get half a point? <laughs> I don't, I'll be honest, bro. I, I do not remember any single yeah. one of you guys. Um, any any single one of you guys' bet, uh, predictions. I have to literally listen to the show, write them up. I don't remember so any basically single. Basically, what happened made. was this. Remember when we were doing the predictions, and I basically said that we wanted to see uh, Final Fantasy twelve into the Switch, and you tell me that's already out on the Switch. I'm like, ah, f fuck. Oh well, and... to, I I can tell you definitively right now, you do not get a point. 
<laughs> and, then, and then basically you tell me, okay, then think of another one around the spot and say, all right, fine. Final Fantasy Tactics gets in, put into the Switch. I'm like, did you uh, wait? Did you did you say tac? If you said tactics, if you said tactics, I may give you point five. I did, did say get tactics. That's why I'm like. I think uh, you should get point two five. <laughs> Like, that's man. really close though that's really I was close so mad like oh um, my god that's the fucking tactics i'm like no that's our crystal like ah. if they would have i mean if they would have if they would announce the final fantasy tactics they would have done it last night at square i know that's true. but um what was next gustavo oh one of one that i'm really looking forward to Link's awakening fuck oh, yes oh September twentieth. September twentieth, twenty nineteen. Jeff is right. That's right around the corner. That's less already pre ordered. The Dreamer edition is up on Best Buy Game Pass or Gamers Club Unlimited. If you have Best it, Best Buy I'd... Game Pass. I like that one. Yeah, I'd sign up for that. Yeah, I'd sign up for the fuck out of that. <laughs> oh my god! Look, I was so mad. Even though Gustavo did tell me that you can actually, you know, uh, Dude, import that... it. Oh, yeah, Europe so is getting mad, Europe is getting like a limited edition. It has this fucking steel book that looks like a Game Boy, and it's goddamn beautiful, it's like an OG Christ. 1989 game. Book. That is a glorious steel book, and I want it. And, yeah, but the and, the Dreamer edition is a little bit of a deluxe. It's ten dollars more. Um, it it, it comes it with like art book, book. stuff like that. Yeah, but I mean, for ten bucks more, if you're if you're a fan of Zelda and that kind of stuff, I mean, it's kind of a no brainer. Uh, so just real quick, one of the good things about this game, uh, they showed uh, uh, they showed gameplay, and one of the new features is you can create dungeons, um, and, and the caption, the cryon on the screen said, "Use chambers earned to create dungeons." Coming September twenty uh, September twenty nineteen uh, nineteen eighty nine September twenty twenty nineteen. But one of the things sorry about that that's a fucking Christmas truck passing by. I know I was gonna say you got ET waiting on the background, <laughs> motherfucker. Is that for Kruger's coming to get you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that that create a dungeon stuff made me think of Super Mario Maker. Um, it looks something cool. It, it's again, it's not one of these things. These, these create, play, and share things that I. Uh, I didn't I didn't coin that nickname that's from Sony but that I borrow um it's not something that I usually uh spend much time in but I I do love it when folks do and I get to spend uh time playing the levels that they build so I'm looking forward absolutely. to Absolutely. Absolutely. Then the um, next announcement was from Square Enix. It's a JRPG Trials of Mana. Yes, oh, which is a it's an entry in the Mana series that never came to the West and now it is coming in a triple pack if I'm no, not no, mistaken. No, 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 no. That's this is we're, we're gonna get something to that, like, different. I'm sorry. I apologize. No you're, fine. no, you're good. You're good. Sorry, listeners. So, so, a, so Jeff is right, but we're we're gonna talk about that literally in three seconds. Sure. So, Trials of Mana is a, a standalone JRPG game in the Mana series. It's a brand new entry, global release. It's gonna come in early 2020. No specific date given. Oh, uh, okay. And on top of that, we're gonna have the first OG, uh, the first three games in the OG Secret, Mana series. Secret which, of Mana. Exactly, which which are available on Switch today called the Collection of Mana. And these games, these three games, never came out to the West. So Jeff is right about that. Yes. Those those it's forty bucks on Switch right now. You can go out and get it right this minute. And then after that, it was just a very quick trailer. It, it was like less than fifteen seconds, maybe. They literally just announced Witcher Three on Switch coming twenty nineteen, and they moved on from that. They literally did not spend any time. It, it sort of, it sort of was a throwaway, but to me, it was a big throwaway. It was, a, wanna, yeah, it's huge. I want to just pause real quick and just note that I was, I was uh, texting the Discord or our group chat and saying that. I really haven't shown the Switch love, and third-party games on Switch are not for me, right? I'd rather just play them on, on more powerful hardware, uh, console in my case. But, man, uh, Nintendo has, has made large strides to make sure that third-party developers are present in the life of this console. And it's not just their first-party software uh, you know, taking the lead, although it, it has. But I, it, it, really, it just reminds me of the GameCube. In the sense that it's just so many third party titles coming to this game, and it's it's just a it's just a great thing. But I'm oh, oh, sorry, Martin, go ahead. You wanted to share no, your thoughts sorry, on it's that? A, it's wonderful because we're just getting good third party games. We're finally getting that support for the Switch that the Wii U yep. and the Wii did not have at all. And, and you can make the I mean, granted that we had a lot of games, but and, and it sold like hotcakes. But my it didn't it didn't have the support that you know the GameCube had. The, I hundred percent agree with you. Had you know. It, Sorry, I'm waiting. We're I'm waiting for you to be done. Crying out loud. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to be done. <laughs> oh, I JP, this fucking Keanu Reeves thing is fucking oh, awesome, dude. Thank Lord. you. <laughs> waiting for you to be done. 
You know what? Fine, Sorry. fine, fine. Let's leave it like that. You can talk all you want to, brother. I'll keep it shut here. Okay. So, I completely agree with you. The third-party support on the Switch is fucking the best Nintendo has ever had, period. End of story. Even, you know, previous, like, when they when they were the hottest commodity in town. Like, yeah, the third-party support is just insane. The only, my only gripe is that most of these games are stuff we've played before. Uh, yes, I agree. A lot so, of, not, not all of them, because there is stuff that is third-party developed specifically for the Switch, and that amazing that is amazing. But, like, The, the Witcher, the Resident Evil uh, 5 and 6, like, all these other, you know, all these Final Fantasy releases, all these re-releases, all these hey. games that we've had on other consoles for or PC for a period of time and then finally now getting on the Switch. If Switch is your only console, that's perfect for you. But for somebody like, you know, like, all of us, we've all have can have the opportunity to play these games before they actually come to the Switch. Yeah, I, I it's reductive to call it a port house, but it is a port house. Alien Isolation as well is is coming is coming to it uh, this year, twenty nineteen, I believe, or twenty twenty. I, I have to look through the notes, but Alien Isolation is a game that came out back in twenty fourteen, and that's being ported to to the Switch. Uh, but but I think it's better it's better than not having any third party support. But I agree. I agree with Jeff fully. Yeah, like as for 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 players like us in particular, uh, the I don't want to call it a oh man. A gimmick is reductive, but the advantage of having it on the go may not sway us as much as it would would for somebody else. But we, we right. totally respect that it would for somebody. Exactly. Else. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not trying to like shit on the people that do want that ability and do want these games or have never played some of these games. I mean, there are games that are ported to the switch that I have not played um, that are, you know, big titles that have been around for a while. And I've completely had the opportunity. I just never have. So maybe, you know, I might play them on the switch, but it's not for me. It's not something I have to, you know, do have to, have to do. Exactly. Yes, yeah. I gotcha. For example, for me, now I have the option of getting either Spyro for my PS4 or getting Spyro reignited trilogy for the switch. And uh, for me, I might go for the switch, you know, I might actually go for the Switch because for me, that just seems like a game that works for the Switch because I could just well yeah those those games are way more designed for like a a don't more... say kitty no I wasn't going to say kitty um, more close knit platforming <laughs> I wasn't actually at all um, like a close knit platforming thing um, that those games. <laughs> I don't want to say they're synonymous with like the Nintendo brand. Please, yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to get at. Because that implies kitty. <laughs> no, it does not. No, it does not. They're synonymous with handheld, which is for me what I enjoy. Platforming for me is something that I just I initially go for. Oh, I'm thinking, oh, on the go. That's that's my 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 biggest thing is my biggest thing with it is like I, this is going to sound like such a an asshole thing for me to say, but I, if I try to play a game that I had already played on the Switch after I'd already played it on a thing, I'm like, where's my Chivos? Where's my, my trophies? Like, uh, I don't know. If I, I, I agree. I agree with him there. Yeah. I, w one of the freedoms of playing on Switch is that I don't, and I know this is a problem just for me and, and for many others, but I can only speak for myself. And I know it's a little, a little bit of a tangent, but I agree with Jeff. Uh, par trophies, at least trophies, not so much achievements. They they paralyze me in terms of what I play, because when I pick a game to play, I'm automatically looking at, can I get the platinum trophy? Is it achievable? Right. And then if the answer is yes, then it's how do I go about it, right? And then I'm I'm not playing to experience the game and have fun. I'm playing to experience the game and get these and get this platinum trophy. And I know yeah. that's not the game's fault. That's my fault. That's that's just right. the way that I and, and I've even been to the point now where I am playing games and. I get to a certain point in the game, like I play it, I'm I'm exploring or whatever, and I get to a certain point in the game, and I'm like, okay, what do I have left? What what am how much more of it do I have? And then I go into the guides, and then I like see how much time I have left. But then I'm like digging and digging, I'm like oh, I only have this much left now. I only have this much left now. So I mean, this is a completely non-related, non-intended discussion that we're having right now, but you know, conversational podcast. Um, but I don't. I, I want to get back to that where I'm exploring and learning things on my own and not 
seeing what I have to do next, you know, seeing what trophies I can easily attain, seeing how far, how much more of a game that I have to get to that ending, to see that ending. It's not about the ending. It's about the ride. Yeah. So you can make an argument for that. It's uh, for me, it's this though. My methodology when it comes to trophies and achievements and, and the like, I have come to a conclusion. If the game does not have a platinum trophy, that immediately goes to my switch. Okay? I mean... Because there's so many games that I bought for the PS4 that don't have a platinum trophy on it. Just have a gold trophy on it. I'm like, mm, this could have gone from my Switch. I could have played yeah. Sonic, Sonic Mania. There's not that many of those home. anymore. No, there's, quite, there's, there's quite a bit in, in, in the smaller digital titles that well, have yeah, a thousand the, achievements. The stuff, yeah, that, yeah that, have a, sure. that have a thousand achievements on, on Xbox but don't have uh, a platinum, platinum trophy on... on That's in, fair. That's fair. Uh, uh, Colin Morgan has talked at length about it, but just real quick before we yeah move let's move let's on. yeah I was saying, before let's before, get... before we move on, I just wanted to say this that um, playing on Xbox and Switch when I do play games, it's actually liberating because I don't I don't care about the achievements and the fact that Nintendo ha- doesn't have them is even right. As you don't have to be I don't worry tied about to those. Yeah, I just play yeah. the game for fun. But yep. yeah, That's so fair. moving on, the next announcement was an- another very quick one. So after Witcher Three, they just showed a, a short trailer for the next uh, Fire Emblem uh, Fates tr- uh, game. Three Fire Emblem Three. I wrote Three Heroes. Thank you for correcting me. Three yeah. Houses trailer looks dope. It comes. They reaffirmed what, what we knew already. July twenty sixth, twenty nineteen. Which that's actually probably my next Switch purchase. I think. I love Fire Emblem. I haven't played one in a very long time, so. I'll I'll, I'll wait for it. I, I for sure my next one is Astral Chain. But uh, uh, Astral Chain is so. definitely, and I like I said, I've already pre-ordered um, Link's Awakening. So, so uh, uh, Kuzioki Kuwakama is out again, and uh, Jeff mentioned it, but I'll just go over it real quick. He mentions Resident Evil. We get like a live-action trailer. We so we see uh, this guy and a girl in this sort of haunted house, and they're playing uh, Resident Evil remake, uh, which is already on the Switch, by the way. But then. <laughs> Uh, that that leads to Resident Evil Five and Six uh, being announced and coming for fall 2019. By the way, that was uh, Jeff's beautiful kid laughing and me talking about Resident Evil. She spooked yes. the shit out of me. She yep. just spooked the shit out of me. I got you. <laughs> I know how to roll. Now, that was actually that was actually my girlfriend's kid, but still. So basically, you have uh, Freddy Krueger in the background. You have scary kids in the background. You got some haunted house. You got you need that to was... call Luigi, okay, Gustavo. You need to call Luigi to help you out with the freaking house. Yeah, she has she has a very infectious laugh, which was super it funny. Is, and it was it perfectly is. timed. She does have a great laugh. Yeah, she does. Um, so another one you, you can always count on me to pat my back. And I called this. I, I actually texted the Discord, <laughs> and I know Marlon was listening, was uh, reading the. Yeah, Discord I moment. I saw it after the fact, and then like you, and then like as soon as you said what you said, uh, Wario posted what it was, and I was like, oh snap, Goose called it. <laughs> ah, dude, I, I saw th- there's a, there was a trailer with this Mech Warrior, and as soon as I saw the art style, it just it I, it it screams Suda Fifty One at me. It, it screams Suda Game, and I I literally wrote Trek with Me- Mech Warrior. Looks like a suit of game. It's Travis from No More Heroes, and I wrote it in big capital bold letters. That's awesome. Kick, yeah, kick, kicking ass and taking names. No More Heroes three. I've never played any of those games. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> On Unreal Engine coming twenty twenty. So that's yep. one to look forward to. Yep. Uh, after that was Contra. The next thing. Yes, it's coming September twenty fourth. Contra, uh, Core Core War. Or I thought it was Rogue Core. Uh, something about Contra. I'm sorry, listeners. Yep. Also, I, I was just uh, crazy right Contra, since we are in that topic right now, it is Contra, Contra World Corps. And okay. also, they announced the Contra Anniversary Collection that was surprisingly released today. So, if you're listening I've never to been podcast, a big fan of Contra. It's not my cup of tea, but... What? I've never oh. been a big fan of it. Not personally, man. It's just not my cup of tea. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. You I have to create respect safe spaces, Marlon. Okay. I was gonna say I re- I respect the people that like those games because I know they paved the way for a lot of shooters. So you 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 are dead to me right now. You are okay, dead that's cool. To me right now. And then Lord. wasn't next after that was Damon X Machina. Yeah, uh, Damon X Machina up next. Uh, it's a mech game that looks dope. The controls, based on the demo that I played, uh, they were ass. That game is another game that's coming out uh, in 2019. That game is out September 13th, 2019. And they're oh, packing September. Yeah, it's something that looks really cool. Um, just me personally, when I played the demo, I just thought it didn't control well. Blowing it up on my TV, man, that game looked horrible. 
and it just it ran like trash dude and i know that i'm a little more sensitive to those things than others but i think that it was bad enough and mind you for the listeners it was this was just a demo i fully expect them to clean up all these little quirks and niggles and stuff um before well yeah uh, i mean that's something the that they do but playing it on I, I thought that it was bad enough that i'm like somebody who doesn't really notice these things is going to notice this thing that's how bad it was in terms of how it ran uh frame rate constantly dropped um it just it just looked a mess on 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 uh on dock mode handheld it, it was uh, it was a better affair but the controls on handheld were just horrible um but i, I don't want to paint it in a bite light in a bad light although i just did that it's something to look forward to it's a brand new game that's coming out this year in a couple of months okay then the next trailer was panzer dragoon yeah i'm surprised they're bringing that one back i'm i'm excited for it though it's coming this winter winter 2019 i'll be honest i've never played the panzer the panzer dragoon games or the legend of the dragoon game so i was a little taken aback um i didn't recognize it right away i know that people on twitter were blowing up i think they recognize it but i didn't i, I wrote new trailer up next reminds me of the lair riding some type of airborne dragon type thing shooting in the skies dog fighting type deal that's what i wrote <laughs> Listening to your description of it just reminds me of a description of for the game back in 1995 when I saw it in one of like the uh, game magazines for the Sega Saturn. It's like it looks like a dragon, but you fight in the air and you shoot things. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I did not recognize that at all. Dude, man, Lee is gonna be having a blast listening to Pan, play Prince of Dragoon all over again. He was asking for yeah. a remake for the longest time. <laughs> A lot of people have, honestly. I'm happy for that. So then, up next, you want to take this one, Jeff? What was the next one? I'm sorry. I think it was uh, Shinja Shinja Takahashi. He comes up next talking about Pokemon. He uh, reconfirms the November 15th release date. Yes, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Oh, man. I am so excited for these games. I... I just, I don't need, like I don't even have words. Um, I mean, Pokemon. He's having been, a Ben moment from EZA right now. He just doesn't know. Right. He can't, find, he can't like, find the words. Pokemon, for, Pokemon for me is like that was the thing that started me on video games. Like Pokemon Blue was my first video game I've ever owned. Um, so I mean, having a new entry, having a new beautiful entry, just I'm so excited. Um, in November, I'm so happy that it's this year. I too, it's crazy. I, I, I too am excited. Um, I haven't pre-ordered it yet, but I, I, obviously I will pre-order it. I actually have not pre-ordered either. I'm debating whether to do the double pack or not. That's where I'm. Why I'm still on the fence. Well, like I'm if, gonna get the if, game. If, obviously, if you have GCU, it doesn't really pay off to do the double pack. What you should do if you have Best Buy Gamers Club Unlock is order both, but individually, because that way you get twenty dollars in reward certificates as opposed to just the ten that you would get if you mm-hmm. just order the pack. I didn't even think of that. Well played, sir. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I've, I'm looking forward to it. Um, the listeners know who've heard the podcast that I wasn't a big fan of Let's Go. I know, I know that for nostalgic reasons, it was a, it was a solid game. It was a good game in its own right. It just wasn't the game. That yeah, I, I mean, it was for. Right. I mean, Let's Go was was good, but I mean, it was it was a nice trip down nostalgia lane, but not like this is the big time. Like this is a brand new full entry, full RPG entry of Pokemon. So Yeah, and so, I haven't played Pokemon since Gold and Silver, so I'm 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 so into this right now. So let me ask you this cuz we are I really the podcast uh because we The, the one thing I'm real quick, can I have real quick Mar- Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you keep going. Okay. <laughs> um the one thing that I'm still really nervous about is uh, they did I think they did say in this that they will have they will have some elements where you can use the Pokéball Plus. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I wrote that down. Um, I, re- I literally wrote, you can use Pokeball gimmick with these new Pokemon games. Put Pokemon in Pokeball gimmick and take them out with you. Whatever that means. From, Sounds like a Tamagotchi gimmick. <laughs> That's what from it is. What, it the is, only thing basically. I'm really worried about with it is the controller types. Can I sit on my couch with my pro controller yes. and play Now, I'm this glad time? That, I'm glad that Jeff brought it up. And I'm going to say it right now, and people aren't going to like it, 
one of my biggest complaints about Pokemon Let's Go wasn't wasn't so much the fact that you didn't catch the Pokemon the way you used to, but wasn't the fact that they included some of these uh, Pokemon Mobile Let's Go mechanics, right? It, it simply was the fact that since I was a, a, a small kid, all I wanted to do was just sit down in front of my big screen TV and play Pokemon just the way I played it on Game Boy. And they could, and I couldn't do that. I, I could, but they either use you to, they either forced you, Nintendo forced you to use that stupid Pokeball gimmick, or you had to use one, with just one of the Joy Cons. And that's not how I wanted to play the game. So I refused to play. I bought it, and to this day I haven't played it, and I don't see myself playing it. But if this game doesn't allow me to sit on my fat ass and play with my Pro Controller, I'm not gonna play that shit either. All right, so before you continue on, I gotta call you out on that. Number one, you could have played your Game Boy, Pokemon Game Boy, on the TV. Yes, if you yes, had I know, I know Nintendo exactly GameCube, what you're gonna talk about. Uh, um, addition to or even it. if you go, or if you, or if you go further back, if you had the SNES cartridge that you can put your Game Boy in it, right? Yeah, or you go you back. You could put your Nintendo, cartridge. Or Nintendo 64 with the expansion pack, you could put your cartridge where you have Pokemon Stadium or Pokemon Stadium 2. So you could have done that, which I did. Didn't really like it because the fact that it blew up the whole thing just made it look like crap. But that's I, I digress. Uh, yeah. Because something that I want to talk about, because we are talking here in Nintendo and talking about Pokemon. Um, since the last show that we did was last week and the Nintendo, no, Nintendo Direct for Pokemon was the next day. Let me ask you this. What do you guys think about the fact that you were able to see Pokemon in the overworld and they had this whole wild area thing on it. Your thoughts on that? I love that part of it. Absolutely. Uh, what about Dynamaxing? What is your thoughts on that? Eh, I mean, it's it's a cool gimmick. Nothing. It's not mind-blowing for me. For I'll me, be honest. For the listeners, I've been out of it for so long. Marlon is basically talking alien words. All I know <laughs> is that I, I'm waiting for Pokemon Shield. I'm, I'm going to get the Shield version. And I want to play it, and it better be good. So you're getting shield. What about you, Jeff? I'm most likely leaning sword now. Okay, I'm probably gonna get both of them, knowing me, because I'm an idiot like that. <laughs> so, uh, and in in the thing that really pisses me off about Pokemon games is that I tend to buy both of them, and I only tend to play one of them. So I, I'll be honest, get... and I think not to open this kind of words. I've never understood that, but continue. So yeah, it's like, was... for me. It's like it's, it's always been like that because. It, Whenever I played the Pokemon games, I never had like friends that would play them. Or if I had friends that would play them, they would play them with the same cartridges that I had. So we never were able to trade like the different Pokemons that if each uh, different um, style would have. For example, like, if I bought Black back in the day, my friends bought Black as well. So nobody bought White. So I tend to, to be just go out there and buy White so I could actually trade into the Pokemon that I didn't have. So... It's just something innate nature for me. Uh, I know it's stupid because now you have the the online play and, and, and online connectivity where you can just basically trade with anybody in the world like that. So it's just something that I tend to do just like as a collector. Uh, I'm happy for the game coming out. I'm really excited for some of the features that it's going to have. It's the fact that it's based on the UK and the fact that they're making the gyms like basically like football stadiums that's what gets me you know because it's the more that this is one of the things that they say that just blow my mind was the fact that the better you do in the battle the more the crowd is going to get into it you know and the more the crowd gets into it, it's going to feed into how well your Pokemon are doing <laughs> i'll think that's my way of saying just shut up already Marshall. yeah i think that's perfect <laughs> Sorry about that. Listen to um, that. God. That's perfect. I'm segueing right out of that. Um, Goose, what was next? Thank you for uh, kicking it right back to me. Probably, probably my favorite game that I saw that's coming at has a release date. New trailer showing off Astro Chain. They, they show off this great looking Metropolis. The action looks incredible. The game looks impressive. The player character, you can see her fighting and she's chained like some sort of ally. There's like this ally that she's got to get, I guess, through the astral chain. And she's using this 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 uh, being, this d deity or something, to traverse platforming sections. I wrote to Marlon. I was like, Marlon, you got to check out the trailer. Because when she, was, when she was traversing the platforms, I was just vehemently reminded 
of vault of glass and the platforming sections and not just because of the platforming but just the actual art style i was like oh my god that looks amazing it's like this high intensity uh, action you, you, sh- you show the player character facing off against this giant enemy monster type it looks amazing and the best thing about it it's coming out in less than three months august 30th it's almost two months august 30th 2019 i mean yep. is that a surprise or what i thought this was a fall 2019 game or even worse like a spring 2020 game i had no idea that camilla was ready to put this out this is camilla's game by the way this is a game this is camilla's team is it no no it's not i keep saying it's camilla i'm wrong about that it's not camilla sorry listeners i gotta look this up it's not camilla somebody else um but it's still a platinum game nonetheless oh my god i'm so excited for it let's see you have thoughts Ooh, on that um, I, I think it looks amazing. I'm super excited, and I'm super excited that it's so damn soon. It's so. Take- Takahisa Tauda. That's that's who, that's who's the director for the game. It's 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 his game. It's not it's not Camille. I apologize to the listeners because I think Camille is working on Bayonetta three. But man, this was one of the games that when they first announced uh, last year, I got so excited for. I'm like, man, this looks incredibly cool, and this is something that I want to play, and this is something that I will pick up on day one. It kind of sucks because like I've already, um, or not already, but I will pre-order uh, Control, and it comes around the same time, so my wallet is going to be slammed a little bit. But hey, that's why we got credit cards. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it's like the same thing with Square Enix for me. Like when they announced the 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 first no first soldier edition i thought to myself okay i i can basically just do the numbers run it down and go okay i can do this much i'll have enough for that date next year i should be good uh but the game looks amazing man the the the, the fact that it just looks so fluid and it's just the art style the combat everything about it is like so damn crisp and so it just makes you want to play it like in a 4K TV or just makes you want to play it like in a big ass TV when it comes to that game. Like I, I, that game, I am not playing it on my handheld mode. I am playing that on the TV, man. That I wonder how it's going to look on docked. I think maybe it'll look a little soft because it is a Switch game. But I'll say this about it. It it looks, it just feels AAA. It just, I'm like, man, I saw that and I was like, it looks so cool. It's a platinum game. So we know we're, we're going to get good action, heavy action, fast action. Um... But we'll see. We'll, we'll, the only thing that I am worried about, believe it or not, I'm happy that it's coming out on August 30th. But I'm also I'm also thinking about, OK, so how long has it been in development for? Um, is it going to be a fully fledged game? They're charging it as such. It's going to be 50. You know, it's going to be a, a 59.99 retail game. Is it going to be a short game? Is it going to be a long game? Is it going to be one of these games where it's short? But it is a platinum game. So I'm imagining you're going to have like time runs and trials and things like that to sort of to sort of like, you know, milk out the juice out of it to have you play more. And those type of things I generally don't like, even though I know that that's part of what Platinum does. Maybe they try to get replayability that way, but uh, we'll see. Here's the thing, though. When I was, uh, so this is what happened. So I'm in the gym and I'm list- and I'm just finishing my workout and I see that it's about time for the Nintendo Direct happening. I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot about it. Let me go at least catch a little bit if i can before i go back and watch the whole thing uh, once i get to the house and then i see ash the, this like this hand coming from the ground it just i'm like wait what bionator 3 like what the fuck and then i realized oh shit it's astral chain what the fuck and it just looks so and it looks so fucking good man like i'm fanning out i get it you know it, but it, it's just one of those games where you just want to play the hell out of the game man I can't yeah, it artists. looks incredible. Like, like the art, or the art style, the, the, the just the, the enemy is just the way that the, the game just plays. It's just it tells you AAA, and and from Platinum, I don't expect anything but the best from them. Hopefully, yeah. In terms yeah. of gameplay, they are they are up there with one of the best companies in terms of just high quality gameplay. When it comes to action games, I think yep. they're top tier. The only thing that I do worry about is that Platinum Games does have a does have a record of uh, I, I call it the uh, peaks and valley games where they have <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, they have amazing games and then they have games that you know that they just put out because they needed to stay afloat and be able to make the next great thing oh right? it's, not because I, of the, it's not because of the tits huh? no no it's because of the <laughs> <laughs> and i i just really hope that this is not one of those valleys i hope that this is a peak but moving on so as well. 
Uh, yep. The next game they showcased was one that I wasn't expecting. It's not an exclusive to Switch. It's coming in 2020, so it's not coming in 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's by Romero Games. It's uh, published... Uh, John uh, Romero. Uh, John, yeah, John Romero. It's uh, made by Paradox Interactive. I wrote... It's, it's, it reminded me of the Godfather games. It's called Empire of Sins. It, it mm-hmm. shows off what I believe to be Al Capone. Yeah, Prohibition Chicago is Pro- set. Is where yeah. it's set. It's sort of this isometric type deal. It sort of looks it's like a strategy. strategy. Game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The aesthetic looks cool. I could see yeah. my cousin playing it. My cousin was a big fan of the Godfather games. He's Those a, games he's a, were really good, especially the second one where you could like control the city and shit. That was super fun. He's really into like the he's really into uh, the New York Mafia. He knows uh, he's like a big nerd when it comes to the New York Mafia. He, my cousin loves that stuff. Very cool. Very cool. So that's something that I, I think that he would like. Um, but yeah, it looks fine. But um, they talked a little bit more about Cadence of Hyrule after that, I believe. Uh, that that comes up. Of, that comes after Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which was what's up next. Yes, sorry. Um, th- there's an expansion for it. They showed off the Black Order, which they had shown up before. Ghost Rider, Electra, Miles Morales makes a uh, uh, makes an appearance, a cameo. Thor, uh, the latest Miss Marvel, Captain America, of course. Uh, July 19, 2019. We knew that already. It's an exp- It's going to have an expansion that starts in fall 2019, and it'll feature. There were three different teams that it features. I'm sorry, listeners, I did not write them all. I, I know that Fantastic Four is one of them, X Men, and then I believe there was another. And then that leads up to uh, Cadence of Hyrule, which uh, Jeff can take over. Yes, um, it is uh, a a spinoff of uh, what Curse of the Necker Dancer. Uh, yes. No, no, no. Um, Something of the Necker Dancer. Yes, it is. It is a spinoff. You're right. You're it's right. not a spinoff, but it's a it's a take on that style of game. But it's an actual like single player. It's not like it's more of a story, like an actual story that you're working through as opposed to uh, Curse of the Necker Dancer, which was a little different. Um, but yeah, it comes out uh, neck, uh, Friday. No, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. June 13th, 2019. Um, it dropped, so that's another game that's coming out for that's slated for 2019. I'm um, actually that one. I I did not play the the first one, but I will probably play Cadence of Hyrule because that actually looks really cool. Actually, I wanted to ask you before we move on to the next thing. What was your reaction, Jeff, when it comes to the actual Marvel things? Do you think that? I mean, Ultimate Alliance looks looks really cool. Um, I am way more excited for Marvel's Avengers than Ultimate Alliance. Like, I might get um, Ultimate Alliance down the road, but I'm not. It's not a day one for me personally. So I- I'll say this. I'll say uh, Marvel has been really kicking it into high gear when it comes to their video games. We, we've had Marvel Spider-Man last year on PS4. We've got uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 on Switch, which I think it's totally made for that platform. And we got the Avengers, which is multi-platform. But is it just me, or do I feel like Marvel Ultimate Alliance is the one that's getting the least love? And Marvel Avengers was just announced. Maybe it's just me, because I know they promoted it heavily. So maybe Right. I think me. it's... Yeah, I, I legitimately think it's just... Yeah. That basically you said it. it. It's just getting the least love because um, these other properties are really, you know, taking the marketing budget right now, and it's the one that's out the soonest where they're trying to hype up things in the future. I hope it sells well. Unfortunately, I will not be picking it up uh, day one, but I I do plan on picking it up probably for the fall. Yeah, I definitely will. I'm, that'll be one of those titles that'll probably go since it is not a first party title. It'll probably it, it may be an exclusive, but it's not first party. So it could possibly go cheaper on Black Friday. I might pick it up then. Yes, my thoughts. Exactly. Um, then yeah. Mario. Oh, there's and like Sonic at the Olympic Games was announced. Yep. Moving on. That's coming out. <laughs> fall. That's coming out. Fall. That's another fall 2019. Actually, 2019 do game. I technically get a point for that? I'll be honest, dude. Again, I don't remember any anybody's. Yeah, my, he doesn't remember anything. Okay. <laughs> my prediction. That. My prediction was a new Mario game will be announced. Uh, you know, and, you, I, and we said any type of Mario game, uh, Paper Mario, whatever. God damn it, Jeff. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll have hey. I'll have I'll have to review it, but I'm pretty. I I, I think I would give you. I think I would give you a full point, because. I, I have, again, it's all, it all comes down to what you worded it as. So, because I'm, I, my, uh, the way I'm going to I just said a new Mario, Mario game. It'll be very literal. So I'm going to be listening to it. And if, in fact, you said, hey, a new Mario game is coming out, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, to me, classifies as a new Mario game. That's, I know that's a broad definition. Yeah, it's because very... Because there's many, very shades of gray there. Uh, yeah, because that, that many, is, that is going many to people... Castle. 
many people would interpret. See, but then I have to th- again, I it, I have to listen to it because if if I use that definition, then I have to use that for every single prediction going forward. So That's if there was so so if there was something that I didn't give Marlon before, then you I will have, have to get it to him now. Absolutely, yeah. yes. To be fair, That's fair. Can you right. imagine he loses the points because of that? That and would be I would, funny. I'll be like, well, you you made your bet, Jeff. <laughs> That's funny. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's cool. Those games don't, I don't really care about them, but, you know, they sell fairly damn well, so. Yeah. I might buy it for, uh, my, uh, for my nephew or something like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, not one called my nephew, my second uh, cousin, I guess you could call it. Yeah. So after that was Goose. I'm sorry. I'm texting with my coworker. We're You're trading ins- we're trading insults over uh, the, the Yankee Mets Yankee the Mets. game. I know. Uh, uh, so the Yankees. The the, oh. the Yankees. The Yankees. The Yankees. So up next is the Animal Crossing game. Fuck uh, I'll, yeah! I'll be honest with the listeners. I've never played an Animal Crossing game. This was all new to me. I don't know what this is. I'm not dumping on it. It looks cool. I thought I have I, thought I have yet to actually watch the gameplay because you said there was like a tw- they did a treehouse demo of it. Yeah, they did like a maybe like a yeah. twenty to thirty minute treehouse demo. I mean, I saw the trailer and I'm so excited. I love Animal Crossing. Those games are so like just relaxing and you just don't really do anything, but it's also so addicting to just p- p- pick it up every single is day. It- is it like that game that came out recently where you just plant stuff? What's the name of that game? Where Harvest you will... Moon. Yeah. Is it Harvest Moon? Yeah. Is it like Harvest a Moon? Part of it, yes. Or Valley, or what was it, the other one? Tree Valley or something? Start of that, start, start of Stardew, Stardew Valley. Valley. That's the one that I'm thinking about. Yes. Is it something like that? It is like a more blown out Stardew Valley. Yeah, I guess that, that's a way of putting it. Stardew Thank Valley you. was kind of in the vein of Harvest Moon. Um, but yeah, Animal Crossing, they're, they're all in the same genre, the, the sub genre. Gotcha. So but yeah, it, I'm, that comes out March 20th of next yeah, year. March 20, 2020. Um, it got pushed back. Uh, uh, it was so supposed wrote, to be this year. Teeth guy explains that title, oh needs, my God. <laughs> that title needs to be pushed back to ensure that the game is the best it can, it can be, will be shown on the Treehouse, which Jeff already mentioned. Yep. Which uh, I'm going to go back and watch that faux show. And I'm supposed uh, to be the anti-Japanese guy. Oh, Lord. Yeah. I'm not, hey, I'm not saying anything anti-Japanese. I just call no, him just saying, guy. hey, bro, bro's got some <laughs> fucked up teeth. Like, yeah. what, what's wrong with that? Instead of saying, anyway. So, uh, so the listeners so, can call me out on this up next. I don't remember if Doom Eternal was announced to Switch. So I, it I was. saw this. It was um, announced on Switch. Um, it was not talked about as it's not. I don't believe it's coming same day. Yeah. Yeah. I, so you're right about that. Um. So when I first saw this, because I must have forgotten that it was announced for Switch, I, I took this as, a, as an actual announcement. So I'm like, oh, wow, it's coming to Switch. I sort of expected it. Um, but uh, the date is to be determined. And mm-hmm. they also announced that Alien Isolation was coming to Switch as well in 2019. Just, wait. Just waiting for that last tease, buddy. And then I they, know we're getting there. Yeah, yeah. But I, I actually like the way that they initially closed it was we were talking about uh, we were talking about trolls we were talking about uh in the discord server for the listeners we were talking about 2014 and the sony conference when mm-hmm. uh, a square enix exec his name escapes me now came out and said hey final fantasy 7 is coming out for the ps4 and everybody was like <gasps> and then he's like the port the pc port and he, he like he threw his head back and laughed it was one of the greatest mm-hmm. troll moments of all time and nintendo did something like that they had this like creature character come down from the skies and like flatten this enemy down, mm-hmm. and the sun was just beaming on him, and so you really couldn't see him. But in, and it looked like a shadow, like an eclipse, sort mm-hmm. of, and it looked like it was Banjo. But then it turned out that it wasn't Banjo; it was some other character. And then you see him coming down, and it is Banjo. Yeah. They close out the show, the initial, the initial closeout with Banjo being coming announced, to smash. coming to Smash. Yeah, fall twenty nine. Super cool, perfect, perfect fit for that franchise. Absolutely perfect so that was a really cool conf- that was a really cool uh uh direct yeah but what what happened what happened at the end there Goose? they had an <laughs> apple like sans the six thousand dollars but wait <laughs> but wait we have one more thing uh again i'm wait, gonna t- can i say it can you i can. say it you can motherfuckers are making a sequel to breath of the wild <laughs> dude 
oh my god i i immediately knew that it was zelda when the torch went mm-hmm. up yep because so so for the listeners uh the trailer starts off with like these wispy green things swirling around in the air later on we I, from what i could tell they looked like incantations they it looks like incantations just swirling around in the air um and then you see this um Oh my God! This torch on fire, just lighting up this wall, and you see this art, and I'm like, Oh my God, Zelda! I, I wrote on the Discord next Zelda, and then my next letters were Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he went off like, and then he literally just put the same thing on yeah, the Discord. He blew channel. up the he blew up the Discord channel. Yes. Uh, sequence for me. Belt. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I just no. saw the sequence in the middle. Go ahead. You know what? For me, was that uh, I'm in the gym, right? So when I see that is this like swirly like uh, runes thing going up into the air, I'm like, I know this art style. It it can be a new Zelda game. They 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 can. I'm just. It. It's. I'm thinking, what the hell is this? I see that it's actually when they say a new sequel to let. Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. I literally just turned off my phone, went to the bathroom, I said, Fuck yeah! <laughs> and then I turned and then I, and then I got out, like so nothing excited. had happened. <laughs> now, it's too early for predictions. Um, I, I, I'm just going to have a couple of hot takes here. The game looks amazing. We, we see, uh, we see uh, Zelda and Link. They're sort of backpacking and trekking think... across this underground. I'm, I'm gonna... of the belief that it's going to have two-player co-op. That's just me, though. I'm calling out. I'm calling right now. Um, it is going to be a Majora's Mask-like style, where like feeling. So Enuma or Inuma, however you pronounce his name, uh, he, we have a quote from IGN. They asked him about this very thing, and he said no. He said that this is not. Uh, a sequel to Majora's Mask. Um, he says that it draws inspiration from Red Dead 2. Um, he says that the mask won't be in it. I, I, maybe he is lying. He says that he understands why there would be that comparison because of the dark theme. He does admit that there will be um, a, a dark theme to this game. He also says that the younger staff who are currently developing this game, he made sure that they played Red Dead Redemption 2. To, to have and that's why it serves as a as an inspiration um i know again i'm not a nintendo guy in terms of I, you know i just got my first nintendo console since game boy with the switch back in 2017 but i am aware that the zeldas usually take a long time to come out usually they put out two yeah. per generation sometimes three to four or even five years between releases but i'm of the belief that this team has been working on the zelda since zelda one launch in 2017 yeah. and i think this is going to be and i'm gonna be wrong I think this is going to be their big 2020 game. I feel like for me, the, the fact that this team was working like this. So they put out uh, Skyward Sword. They put it out for everybody to play. They immediately start working on Breath of the Wild. So they're playing Breath of the Wild. I mean, they're, they're developing Breath of the Wild. I feel like a team was split in half after 95% of Breath of the Wild was done. And says, all right, you are now going to be working on Breath of the Wild on the sequel on it. Here's the engine. Here's the things that happened. There's all the stuff that you can work on it. While the main team finishes Breath of the Wild, you'll be working on the sequel. So when Breath of the Wild is finished, the main team will now shift focus onto the sequel and it'll start working on it. Because the fact that this (coughs) game is coming out in the same generation... The fact that we're getting uh, Zelda Link's Awakening for the Switch. The fact that we're getting a second Legend of Zelda game tells me that these people are actually really, like, on their toes, man. They're, they really are on their heels when it comes to actually working this stuff. Because I remember when Skyward Sword came out, that was the first... I think that was the last game for the Wii. And the first game for the Wii U, right? If I remember correctly. Uh, which which one? game? Skyward Swords. Skyward Sword was the last one for the Wii. And you're talking about you're, you're talking about um, the one that came out for the first one that came out for Wii that launched with the Wii. What was that one? Uh, Skyward Swords, I think. 
No, no, that wasn't Skyward Sword. That that was the last one that came out for a week. It was the other one. Um, my God, the listeners are gonna be so upset. What the Wind Waker? No. Which uh, for wait? What do you what are you what are you asking, Marlon? I'm sorry. Twilight Princess. Twilight so, Princess. Yeah, Twilight Princess was, was and... the one that came out to Wii and GameCube. Yes. Yes. That's correct. So it came out on GameCube and then also went to Wii and then same thing went from Skyward Sword. I went from Wii to Wii U and the fact that we're getting two this generation that's like for me they're like that these guys are really trying to hammer in that they are need their gamers back they're showing that they want to do right by the gamers and they want to just make sure that their properties are being utilized correctly because most often than not we see a lot of nintendo games that just take so long to be developed that that should not have taken that long and so just Go ahead, Mar. I'm sorry. No, oh, go ahead. That's just basically what it was. So, was so just real quick before before we close down on yep and on the ra- before we wrap up on the show and talking about Nintendo's direct, uh, I, I I always like to pat my back and I, I say that jokingly, but I also <laughs> I also say that seriously because I I really like saying things on prior shows that come to fruition by facts and by evidence, and when the Switch first came out, one of the things that I do remember saying was that. Because of the fact that it's a hybrid and, and a home console, uh, Nintendo was going to be able to leverage all of the developers. Developers are are not an infinite resource; they are a finite resource. And in the past, um, they had usually they would they would have things like three consoles, right? They would have the the the, the, the DS, the 3DS, the GameCube, the the Wii, the Wii U. It, it was it was all of these teams working on on these disparate consoles. But now, all of these teams on convert are converging on just one console the handheld version is the 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 default version in terms of sorry i shouldn't say that the handheld version is the same version as the docked version they're just focusing on one machine and yes i understand that they're they're developing games uh, to on, on 3ds but it's it's i promise you that that there is a small reservoir they're taking less and less resources that that console is taking less and less resources from nintendo and this is the promise of what the switch was meant to be we have so many games coming out in 2020s. The theme of E3 up until today was spring 2020, spring 2020, yep. spring 2020. And Nintendo shiftly planted the flag and said, we are the console of fall 2019. And yep. we have games up the wazoo coming that you can play in the next six months. Absolutely. If you want to play games in fall 2019, you're going to need a Switch. And that's just the promise that that I had said. I mean, and I just meet people was... around the industry. Because, I mean, yeah, that, it's it's funny because I was actually having this conversation um, with a friend of mine uh, last night um, saying that, you know, in terms of big fall tentpole releases for my Xbox or for my PlayStation, there's only a handful, which I can't really honestly remember saying too often. Um, but now with all these things coming for the Switch this year, like, I'm like, shit, I'm going to be playing my Switch more than probably anything else. Yeah. And that's crazy uh, to think about. Think about it like this. For me, this E3 was, for the most part, you know, taking away some gameplay from Final Fantasy VII Remake and taking some gameplay from Doom and from some of the other games from the other uh, conferences. To me, this was, up to this point, show trailers, not gameplay, or very little gameplay. It was, it was, a, it was a wait and see. And then I see Nintendo, and I just see gameplay, 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 yeah, they gameplay. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know. Like, I added like all these videos from the treehouse, like all the the gameplay demos. I mean, most of them are twenty to thirty minutes apiece. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's just crazy. It's a, <laughs> they stole I mean, the show, man. Nintendo stole they, the show. They, from yeah, they ended it with a damn bang. Are you crazy, Nintendo? Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, like in the. I mean, Marlon, what, in, Marlon, what reference is that? Uh, oh God. Such an idiot. Let's see if you got it. Let's see. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember the game right now. Like, fuck, man. Are you I'm sorry. Are you crazy, Montana? Are you crazy? <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's as good as a way any to, to wrap up this oh, episode man. of the AEG show. I mean, Nintendo blew it up. And kudos to them. I'm looking forward to playing this stuff this year. So. And next year. There's a bunch of stuff next year, too, that I'm looking forward to playing. Yes, sir. But uh, but that's all we have for you on this episode. 
on the final episode of day three, we will be doing a wrap up E3 episode, hopefully with Dalton uh, coming this. Not, not, not uh, this, uh, n- not this next week. Hopefully we can do it uh, this Friday. Uh, Jeff is right. Hopefully we can do it this Friday, but uh, be on the lookout because on the 17th of June, we are dropping a great episode that we recorded a while back with uh, Michael from Crankage Games, a game developer over at Crankage Games who puts his games out on Steam. So be on the lookout for that one. It's a, it's a solid show. It's a great one. Uh, Thanks to Michael. Looking forward to that. I was not on that episode, so I'm looking forward to hearing that shit. Oh, it's a good one. Wait, 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 Gustavo, what? What, what? What, what? In the butt. Don't, don't, don't fuck Thank with you. me, Goose. You made a deal for what? With Crankage Games? Are you crazy, Goose? Are you crazy? Oh, this guy. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he, he had me going there for a second, too. Yeah, I was like, what? Oh, Lord, man. I was like, but Yeah, oh. definitely stay tuned uh, the 17th million. to hear that. And we will be doing a wrap-up, an E3 wrap-up show here very soon. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, but very soon. Um. Oh. And yeah, I mean, and the and, and we're also gonna do one that tallies the predictions, and we're gonna yes. get a winner out. We're yes, gonna get a winner. We may do it all in one show, but most likely that'll be its own beast as well, because that'll be fun to just have a a, a goof off show doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially because now that E three is over with, I feel like news is gonna be slow for a little while. It always is. Oh, E three is not over. E three is over for us, but the news, the, the deluge of news, just started today, dude. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna get a lot of details on a lot of different things. I'm sure that we didn't haven't gotten yet. So, for sure. But thank you guys for being with us this week, uh, this week, last few days. Um, we really appreciate the the love and support. Um, and be sure to stay tuned on all of our stuff here at the AEG show. Oh, 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 oh,